Today, we're about to witness an extraordinary challenge. Sharu, our daredevil, aims to ride his motorcycle on this massive vertical circular track, defying centripetal force at the topmost point. But here's a twist. He must maintain a minimum speed. Go too slow, and he won't have enough force to keep him attached at the top. This thrilling act isn't just about guts. It's a dance with physics, particularly centripetal force. Centripetal force is the force that keeps an object moving in a circle. It constantly pulls it towards the center. And when the force remains constant, the object experiences a consistent pull or acceleration toward the center, even if his speed stays the same. Now, even if the object moves at a constant speed, its direction keeps on changing due to this inward force. This changing direction is why we have centripetal acceleration. Even if its speed might remain steady, the bike's velocity changes because velocity is a vector quantity and it depends on magnitude as well as direction. To ensure his success, Shuru leans on two key formulas. The first is F equals to mv squared divided by r. Here, m is the mass of the object moving in the circle. V is the velocity by which it is moving in the circle, and r is the radius of the circle in which it is moving. This formula determines the force needed to keep an object in its circular path. The second formula is F equals to mr omega squared where m is the mass of the object moving in the circle, r is the radius of the circle in which it is moving, and omega is the angular velocity of the object. In simpler terms, if an object is moving faster in its circular path or is located further from the center, it will experience a greater force pushing it towards the center. This is crucial when performing spins or sharp turns. Next time you are riding your bicycle really fast, focus. If you take a turn from the outer rim of the circle or the inner rim of the circle. By understanding and using these formulas, Shiru has calculated his needed speed by taking into account the weight of himself and his bike and the loop size, ensuring he can counter the centripetal force. Let's dive deeper with an example. If Sharu and his bike weighs 170 kg together and he's taking the loop at 20 meters per second with a loop radius of 15 meter, how much force is he experiencing? So the given values are mass equals 170 kg, velocity equals 20 meter per second and radius of the loop is 50 meters. We know that F equals to mv squared divided by r. Let's put the given values in the formula. Let's solve for square first. And now we will multiply 170 with 400 to get 6,800. Simplifying it further, and we get this value. And when we solve for this, we get 4,533.34 kilograms meter per second squared. The important thing to note here is that one kilogram meter per second squared is equal to one Newton. So now we know Shuru will experience 4,533.34 Newtons of centripetal force on him when he is in the giant loop. Oh my good, I think finally the moment has come and Shuru is ready to roll. <laughs> Shiru leverages the power of physics for an exhilarating performance. Oh my god! A flawless loop, maintaining the perfect speed and understanding of the forces at play. It's not just a big win for Shiru, but also a big win for physics.